wish to welcome the team of FGP program to our video. As part of our comprehensive report, we submit this video to summarize some of the findings that we've found and key research that we've found in this report. Our group consists of five members. My name is Andrew, and together with Kathy, Julia, Celine, and Laura, we will discuss our three research questions. I now would like to introduce Kathy, who will discuss some of the assumptions we've made in our research. Hi, my name's Kathy, and I looked at the assumptions of this program, and I'll be later on I'll be discussing the limitations. So first of all, when we looked at the data, we saw that um, throughout the statistical analysis of the program, 16 duplicates were detected and were removed. Um, and second of all, we conducted two t-tests. Um, and for the purpose of that, uh, we saw that um, when a descriptive statistics procedure was done, we were able to deduce that there were eight outliers in total, um, and then we ran two more t-tests in order to compare um, the variance between the sample with and without the eight indicated outliers, and it was found that the variance was reduced without the outliers, meaning that the model uh, fitted the data better uh, without the outliers. The reason why these were done was to ensure that the data would be a better and accurate fit for the model that we were seeking to establish. Um, thirdly, we did assume that the membership was a paid membership. Um, this can be attributed to the fact that in 2016, there were some members who did not uh, purchase nor redeem and were still recorded and considered active in the program. And lastly, we assumed that there were instances of point promotion marketing strategies. Um, this means that points accumulated did not always equal the dollar amount spent. Thanks, Kathy. Let's now hear from Julia, who will address our first research question on what factors influence a customer's ability to give value to you, FGP. Firstly, we had to define what a valuable customer is. Uh, we used the NPS scores to find the most valuable customer from our data set. By filtering the results, uh, we found that of the 1,977 members in, included in the entire data set, there were 253 people who selected a 9 or a 10 rating for both SAP program and Net Promoter. These are the people who provide the most value to the firm. There were 485 people who were classified as detractors, which are individuals who detract value from the business. And overall, we calculated an NPS score of minus 11.73%, which means that there are more detractors than there are promoters in the data set. We then ran a regression between total sales amount and satisfaction times the moderated variables um, for people who have redeemed at least once in 2015. On the screen, those coloured red are the variables which are most impactful on the data. The second most valuable customers are highlighted in orange and the third are highlighted in yellow. Of these customers, there was only one customer with a p-value less than the significance level of 0.05. However, it is not significant in the overall regression as it could indicate a multicollinearity problem. Furthermore, there are three bits that are above 10, which indicates issues with the data. Of active customers, we looked at a breakdown of customers to cities. By conducting a bar graph breakdown and correlation between gender and city, we find no valuable insights. We found a correlation between promoters and race, with the majority promoted customers from race one. Correlations between satisfaction and total sales and spend and redeem amount indicated a very weak relationship, with the highest correlation between total sales amount and the 2014 register date with a correlation of 0.1. While conducting a correlation between total sales amount and customer variables indica indicated the greatest correlation between register date 2014 and total sales amount with 0.154, which whilst is the highest correlation is still fairly low. Thanks, Julia, for that comprehensive definition of what a customer means to FGP. I now pass you to Celine, who will discuss research question number two. So, my name is Celine, and I was working on research question two. In research question two, we looked into within what parameters are customers likely to churn, and if those customers churning are valuable customers to the loyalty program. So, what exactly is churn? So, churn can be defined as a percentage of unsubscriptions to a program within a given time. In the, in the context of our report, churn is a point in time where a customer discontinues their membership to the loyalty program. So what exactly causes a customer to churn? So through undertaking a logistic regression, we found that between the years 2015 and 2016, 1,490 people stayed in the program and 494 people churned, meaning that's almost 25% of a churn rate. The regression subsequently is able to tell us which part of the program held the highest esteem in affecting a customer's willingness to stay or churn. 
So referring to our data here, you can see that with our R squared value of L, R squared L has a 0.169, uh, meaning there's a 17.9% of fit with the data. Although this is relatively quite small and this is quite low, the reason behind this was due to our utilization of categorical data within a binary regression. However, looking at the p-value, of, uh, which is extremely low and lower than 0.05, one can attain that the regression is actually significant, despite the lower R squared. Yet, looking at the p-values of these factors and variables, we attain that satisfaction of program and grocery are therefore insignificant due to their p-values being above 0.06. This highlights also that the customers who are unsatisfied with petrol and fast food are more likely to churn due to the fact that they have higher um, integers. So the prediction values um, are above the cutoff rate. So looking at the prediction values, we can see that anything above 0.5 uh, means that these, uh, these customers are churning due to the cutoff rate of 0.5. And this occurs especially as we can see when petrol um, is lower than 6. And also we found that those who rate the satisfaction between the variables 7 and 10 are likely therefore to also promote the program. Oh, so Julia, you are working on question 1 and looking at the valuable customers within the program. Could you just um, define exactly what a valuable customer is? So in order to define a valuable customer, we have to create our own definition of a valuable customer um, to our merchant. Yeah. So through data filtering, uh, we use the net promoter score, which is a universally accepted mm -hmm. um, function of value in order to establish who are the customers that are most valuable to the firm. So by utilising this universally accepted NPS system, the managers are able to apply this information in a more practical sense. So under this NPS score, um, an individual score between 0 and 6 means that a customer is a detractor from a firm. So this simply means that they actually detract value from the business. A value of 7 or 8 means that a customer is a passive, which means that they neither provide or detract value to the firm. And a value of 9 or 10 means that the customer is a promoter and this means that they give value to a firm. Yeah. That's really interesting because um, we did have a lot of customers ranking satisfaction as 10 um, and the ones that were churning were satisfaction lower than 6 which means at the end of the day the ones that are churning are not actually that valuable. I worked together with Laura to formulate some key ideas and strategies to improve the FGP program. The current program has some major flaws. For example, whilst there's an almost even split of 49 to 51 male to females, there is no purpose in targeting advertising or promotions to a certain gender. We ran a regression to see if gender was related to program satisfaction, but found an insignificant p-value of 0.928 and an r-squared of 0. Moving on, fuel and grocery had the highest sales, contributing to 48% of total revenue. Fast food only earned 4% of revenue. This is a big difference between departments. However, whilst fast food earns the least revenue, they're responsible for a massive 64% of redeemed points. This means that fast food is the least earning department, yet honors the highest value of discounts. This is a major issue for the longevity and profitability of the program. Interestingly, grocery, the second largest department, offers 0% of point redemption, which has two implications. First, grocery is not contributing towards the cost of the program by validating discounts in store. And secondly, their presence in the program does not offer them an overwhelming amount of additional sales. To resolve these issues, we see three key areas that need improvement. First, we need to increase customer satisfaction. Second, we need to increase our membership growth. And third, we need to settle concerns over departments. To increase our customer satisfaction, we conducted some market research. We noticed a lot of other programs offered credit cards, so we ran a regression to see if this would increase customer satisfaction. Unfortunately, FGP would not benefit from this. Similarly, age did not influence satisfaction. However, by segmenting our members into age brackets, we noticed a clear trend that most of our customers were born between 1985 to 1990. Lastly, we noticed in a regression that customers who were recently active in 2016 had a slightly higher satisfaction in the program. Also, if a customer spent more money in stores, they would typically have a higher satisfaction. Combined, we recommend that we should keep customers active and make them spend more money in stores by offering bonus sales deals for combination items. For example, introducing discounts for purchasing two or more items for a cheaper unit cost. Our second area of discussion is increasing membership growth. Over time, you can see that the highest growth period was between 2013 to 14. Just because the program has members doesn't mean it's performing at its fullest. 
For example, FGP had 1,984 members in 2014, yet in 2016, we had only 1,490 active members. This is a decline of 494 members, a reduction of almost 25%. This shows that whilst people are enrolling in the program, there is a greater decline in their activeness of old members. However, the program does not excite and translate our momentum in customers to frequently make more purchases throughout the year. Next, we felt it was important to determine whether participation was improving over time. Thus, the redemption rate formula returned 59.196%, which is above the industry average and a positive result for the program. To discuss our third key element regarding departmental and managerial concerns, I shall now pass you on to Laura, who will discuss the key strategies that we recommend. Thank you, Andrew. Our primary concern in approaching how to improve the loyalty program was to identify a strategy to even the playing field in the cost and benefit of the program and ultimately increase the success and longevity of the program overall. Two major concerns that plague the profitability of the program in the short term to mid term is firstly that fast food has the highest cost of burden to the program yet has the smallest revenue. And secondly, that the grocery, second largest department by sales revenue, has no benefit to the customers as they cannot redeem points in store. For fast food, we predict management are dissatisfied with the disproportionate sway towards the majority of their discounts being burdened by their chain. With 64% of the redemption captured at the fast food chain, despite only acquiring 4% of sales, it is practical to suggest a system in which the points are valued in proportion to the destination to where they are purchased or issued. We would like to suggest two strategies to tackle the drastic bias currently existing towards the grocery chain. We firstly suggest option one, in which we propose that the alteration of the value of the points would be positive to have an impact on the level of spending between the chains. Through implementing such an action, we hope to be able to encourage program users to spend more at the fast food um, chain by rewarding them with more points for this action. In turn, this should alter the significant bias in spending and redemption that currently exists. With a ratio of 48 to 48 to 4 percent of the sales, we propose that users receive six points to every one dollar spent at the fast food chain in comparison to one point to one dollar from purchases from the grocery and the petrol station. This offer would motivate users to spend more evenly between the three branches of the program and thus even the cost versus benefit for each individual department. Secondly, we would like to propose and recommend option two, in which um, employs the use of subsidizations between the three branches in proportion to the sales that they receive. In order to create a fair program which is able to benefit all members of the program and ensure customers are not disadvantaged, each chain would repay the other chains or receive compensation depending on the percentage of overall sales. For example, if the petrol station receives 38% of the sales in 2016, and only 20% of the redemption of points, then the change would even out their loss by allocating the remaining 18% of the discounts to them, making their sales and redemption percentages equal for the year. Therefore, profits and success of each individual branch within the program is balanced with the losses made, allowing both the larger and smaller chains to prosper by encouraging overall spending without burdening one another. So I'll be talking about limitations. There are a variety of limitations evident within the data use and therefore impacting the results and quality of our confusions. Firstly, an issue with outliers meant that our data being a fit for a large population. This meant that it was rather difficult to find trends that were suitable and applicable for every single 1,985 people or person surveyed. Uh, human error wise, students were responsible for conducting data analyses and corroborating the findings. With a lack of practical experience in terms of applying statistical tools and interpreting data accurately, human error may have occurred. Secondly, random non-sampling error. Survey questions were used to obtain customer satisfaction on the loyalty program. However, the details of the methodology and conduct of retrieving the information was not mentioned. For example, whether if the survey was conducted in store or on an electronic tablet. This may affect the reliability of the data set and ultimately the validity of the program's findings. In terms of research question one, the meaning of value is subjective as there is no universally accepted definition. Furthermore, engagement may also be subjective and could have several interpretations. Data analyses have revealed a low R squared, indicating that only a small percentage of members in the loyalty program are actually active and therefore the data does not fit the model we seek to correlate. Nevertheless, over the course of assessing the program, issues with the integrity of the data arose. For instance, the presence of duplicate records as well as extreme outliers led to data manipulation in order to generate accurate findings of the problems in the loyalty program. 
Outlines were removed to obtain a better fit. However, the altered data may have resulted in inaccurate findings. Moreover, regression analyses have revealed that a low R squared indicating that the model does not fit the data set and the prediction where we want to correlate or establish. Uh, difficulty in prediction can be contributed to the fact uh, that raw data was converted to categorical data in the coding process, which consists of two binary values between 0 and 1. Lastly, in regards to research question 3, um, similar to research question 1, the term improvement is also subject to interpretation, and the findings, definition, and recommendations may overestimate the depth of the program's weaknesses. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you found some intuitive insights in our data and enjoy reading the report.